It is 823 KTRS, the Big 550, Jake Hansler, Kelly Jackson. Hey. And we are joined by Tony Messenger, St. Louis Post-Dispatch columnist. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, Jake. Good morning, Kelly. How Hi, you Tony. Doing? Um, as you know, McGraw had to leave. I'm filling in, but glad to have the opportunity to, to speak with you. Uh, you have a couple columns this week. What do you want to start off with, Tony? Uh, let's start with uh, sort of the mayor's race and, and, and how a police spokesman, Jeff Rorta, became uh, uh, a, a primary character in the, in the mayor's race, even though he's not running. Can I ask you uh, to do something for, for me and for our listeners? Yes. It, it, explain what Jeff Rorta is in terms of how he relates to the police officers, the Police Officers Association. I think it helps then to figure out why are all these candidates talking about him. Sure. Jeff Rorta is the business manager for the St. Louis Police Officers Association that represents the it's it's the police union for uh, the city of St. Louis police. And so he has a contract to represent them. He is the guy who uh, is their spokesperson, is often uh, leading negotiations with, uh, you know, the city over contracts. uh, And he became even more of a public figure post Ferguson because he came one became one of these talking heads on uh, cable television and he became very divisive and uh, issued a variety of statements and uh, social media posts that were uh, deemed by a lot of people as racially offensive um, blamed President Obama for the deaths of of Dallas police officers, and he has been called on to be fired by all of the black candidates who are running for mayor. Um, And my column on Sunday followed Lida Cruzen, uh, uh, the older woman from Central West End area who's also running for mayor. She had refused to call for him to be fired previously uh, she's been asked about it at campaign stops and at forums and that sort of thing. She has the endorsement of the St. Louis Police Officers Association. And on Friday, uh, or maybe it was Thursday night, I forget the exact timing, but uh, she issued a, a press release in which she said Jeff Rorden needs to be fired. Uh, and it followed some social media statements that he had put on Facebook uh, demeaning to Shara Jones uh, uh one of uh, Lyda Cruzen's uh, rivals for the uh, in the mayor's race. So, so now all the mayor's candidates, uh, or at least any of the ones who have a chance to win, are calling on the the business manager for the police officers association to be fired. And the thing that I point out in my column is that um, this puts the police in a difficult situation because. Their next mayor is going to be very important to them as the city deals with crime, as the city deals with whatever the next you know contract is, whether or not their their mayor may not be a new police chief. I mean, there's also been criticism of Sam Dotson by some of the mayoral candidates, um, and so I suggested, as as others have, that uh, uh, it, it it puts the police in a very difficult situation if he stays as their business manager. Any um, indication out there that uh, the rank and file are considering getting rid of Jeff Rorta? You know, I don't know. I know some rank and file who, who definitely don't stand by his statements, but, but the, the, uh, there are others who do. And the interesting thing about, <clears throat> but, you know, police, like so many of us in our various professions, um, can be pretty tribal. And one of the things that uh, a lot of police officers like about a guy like Jeff Rorta is the fact that he's always got their backs. There's no wavering. And this is something that a lot of police officers, because they have such a difficult job, they put their lives uh, in danger on a regular basis. Uh, they don't want to deal in a in a world of nuance. And uh, Jeff Rorta doesn't deal with nuance. He purely has the officer's backs, period. That's the kind of guy that he is. And so a lot of officers appreciate that, even if they don't like uh, some of his statements. The problem is, if we're going to keep police officers safer, most of the officers I know, and Sam Dotson, the chief, has talked about this, to make the job 
of policing safer, you have to improve the trust between the police officers, between the, the police departments, and communities of color and people who live in um, high poverty areas in the summer that are in, in, the, in the city. That's the challenge. And having a business manager who consistently makes statements that are offensive to people of color makes it harder, I believe, and a lot of people believe, to keep police safer because you don't improve the trust between communities and the police who serve them. Isn't it possible, Tony, to be both a ardent, uh, be an ardent uh, supporter of the police as their business manager and not engage in the political rhetoric of divisiveness along uh, race lines, along religious lines, whatever um, uh, distinctions uh, these days that, uh, are out there? I, I think that's absolutely possible, and that's, that's one of the reasons why um, uh, so many people have been so offended by Rorta's attitude. You know, part of the problem we have here in St. Louis is we don't have just one police union. We have two police unions. We have primarily a white police union and primarily right. a black police union, and that's, that's a sign of how divided we are in St. Louis. Not every major city has two police, uh, two police unions, one for black officers, one for white officers. Now, to be clear, not everybody in the Ethical Society of Police is black. Not everybody in the St. Louis Police Officers Association is white. There, there are uh, members of, of both races that belong to both organizations. But, you know, from a primary standpoint, we have a white police union and a black police union. Um, you don't very often hear the black police union making racially offensive comments while they stand up for police officers. Right. Uh, Jeff Rorta ought to be able to do that as well. Tony Messenger, a columnist, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Um, his column on Jeff Rorta was in the Sunday Post-Dispatch. It's available online as well as uh, a column that we didn't get to, uh, Tony, about uh, the immigration swearing-in ceremony, which um, those are wonderful, and I, and I encourage people to, to look up your, your column on that. Um, I bet that was a, a great time. I appreciate it, and as, and as you know, uh, boy, we, it's a difficult time in our community right now dealing with uh, uh, immigration issues. Uh, the Muslim family that you represent in uh, uh, Country, Country Club, Club Hills, Hills and uh, the, the Jewish vandalism that we had at the cemetery uh, – uh, that's being reported on this morning. I mean, there's 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 a lot of divisiveness right now in our country related to uh, people that are different from other people, and it's it's not a good look for the United States of America right now. No, it is not. Thank you very much, Tony. Thanks, Jay. Good to talk to you. You too. Uh, Eight thirty-one, KTRS. The big.